the mountains of eastern Kentucky and we're bear hunting, sort of. Well, we are. We're looking for a radio collared bear, which is part of a research study designed to document the recolonization of bears into Kentucky. Bear return has been natural. Uh, range expansion from other states. Uh, they've just come on in. And uh, you know what's promising about that is, is, you know, 50 years ago, this probably likely wouldn't have happened because we wouldn't have had these mature habitats that we have now that can support and sustain bears. Now, currently, how many bears do we have in Kentucky that, that have uh, collars? There's approximately 34 right now. They're constantly sending out a, a VHF beacon, a pulse, that we can use to track the bears. And, you know, at the same time, these particular collars are sending on a schedule that we determine the GPS unit in that collar is linking up with satellites and downloading and transmitting a location um, at, to us as to where this bear is. It yields some incredible data, especially among the females, and those are the information um, factors that we use to help manage the population. Now what we've got is a situation up on this hill. We know the bear's there. In this case, we're gonna have a female here. She's probably gonna have some new cubs, and so she's gonna be relatively inactive, and those cubs are gonna be nursing uh, with her inside of the den. So we're gonna send somebody up to actually dart the bear. This is our dart rifle. So she's gonna be rather groggy and sort of lethargic, uh, when we go into the den, but nevertheless, we'll, we'll need to tranquilize her in order to change her radio collar out so that we can continue to monitor her. First time? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was certainly nervous, but uh, we, we've done maybe 40 of these. We're coming in and interrupting their uh, hibernation. They're not expecting us to come in, here, in there, and uh, we're not really in danger. Keep my voice down, because you might be. Uh, close to a bear, but John is up there trying to pinpoint the bear with the uh, telemetry antenna. But yeah, the eastern Kentucky, the hills are uh, pretty steep out here. You know, you gotta like what you do to not <laughs> come down these mountains. We're getting close. I think she's right around the corner here. smoothly. I don't even know if she woke up. Um, we're going to back out and uh, let her, let the tranquilizer take an effect and we'll come back and make sure she's out and handle the cubs. Wow. Boy, this is a big bear now. Now, do we know anything about the mother, her age, or? Um, she is seven. This seven is her, seven. this is her third known litter. <laughs> oh, they may be two, three weeks. I'm a daddy, we got two boys and a girl. This is an uprooted tree. That's correct. There's not any set idea of what a den is. That's right. Um, but it could just as easily be in some kind of rock crevice um, within a, a rotted out tree. Even we've seen bears denning under uh, discarded um, machinery of some kind, you know. Um, if it's insulated and protects them from the elements and it's serene area where they're not going to be disturbed. Uh. Okay, explain uh, the hibernation process. There's really no foods available in the dead of winter in the middle of the mountains. So uh, there's no adaptive advantage for them to feed so the best thing they can do in order to survive at a population level is to den, um, live off their fat reserves. Uh, when they do that, they're obviously not eating. So when they're in these dens from roughly, you know, November through March, uh, they don't drink, they don't eat, they don't urinate, they don't defecate. Um, so they're just literally living and consuming everything that they take with them into the den. So that's why the, their, their metabolism is at, at half, less than half? Oh gosh, I'd say it's, you know, much less than half wow. of what it would be in a normal active state, at least during the summer. So that's how they survive throughout the winter. That's right. I'm going to switch out the uh, mother's radio collar, and um, and John is going to put some uh, pit tags in the cubs, which go under their skin. It's the same thing as when you microchip your pet 
Right. Um, so when we catch them again later, we can scan them and we'll know who their mother was, where they were born and things like that. So they're here to stay. We have to adjust. And you know, all these bears look uh, cute and sweet and innocent when they're, you know, just a pound or three. Um, however, uh, you know, people can really do a lot to keep these bears from getting in trouble. Uh, and it's a shame when we look at, you know, bears like this, that someday these could be bears that we would have to put down um, because they've learned how to live around people. Um, but when they become wild, just like any other animal, you can't predict their behavior. Um, and sometimes that happens and uh, we just want to prevent that and, and hope everyone out in the, uh, Kentucky um, that lives in bear country can help us. Now, the fact that we have these bears here now and they're reproducing, you know, at, a, at a really good levels uh, as far as bears go, it's a really good indication of the overall health of the, of the e ecosystem here in the southern Appalachian area. This is probably one of the most interesting things I've ever done because it involves a part of nature that you just don't get to see. Uh, the next step today is we're just going to um, reunite this family group, put them back down in their den and uh, say adios and perhaps we'll see them next summer on the trap line. So that probably is one of the better experiences I've had here at the Department of Fish and Wildlife and with Kentucky Field. This isn't bad, it, it looks better than you think. Lean your heads a little closer together.